This lesson we're going to talk about finding the painting in the photograph. Spending more time cropping, deciding what's important, what's not. And then starting with the focal point, which is the whole idea when you take a photograph or see a photograph you want to paint, is there something that makes you want to paint it? You want to start there and think in terms of the simplified uh, uh, shapes, values, which helps to create more simple color and uh, go from there. In this lesson, we're going to talk about finding the painting in a photograph. The idea that with digital images, it's easier to take a wider angle view and then crop and find the painting within the photograph. And then find the big values and big colors that we can paint back into, break up and, and then finish or create detail or broken color. And these are images from a um, trip to Greece. A lot of boats, oh, they're all islands we went to and a lot of buildings. But there's a lot of good material and uh, very paintable. All these islands, besides tourism, their main industry is fishing. So a lot of good fishing boats, older, newer ones. So what I want to do is design each one of these, crop, decide what to leave in, leave out. And you can do this on Photoshop, do it on a thumbnail drawing quite easily thumbnail drawing. I actually still like that better. When I look at a photograph or take photographs, I find what it is that interests me first. Sometimes it's very easy, but whatever draws you to the take the photograph or paint the photograph you're looking at. And these two boats are the obvious ones. And when I paint two boats like this or two of anything, what I don't want to do is get the entire shape of both boats in there. I either want to crop a little bit here or crop a little bit here. Because if I get them both in, the whole boat, or two boats in their whole shape, the painting looks kind of confined. They're like there's no space. They're kind of hemmed in. But when one boat goes off the side or a group of trees, one group or one tree goes off the top or whatever it is, it makes it, it gives the idea of space around the images. And then after that, I want to decide what I can eliminate. And there's a lot to easily eliminate right off the bat. All this in here, going up this way, and of course some of the edge there. So all this over in here, I think I could easily eliminate but also I want to decide how to handle this stuff back in here. It's way too busy. And I want to leave some in and take most out. So on my cropping, I decided to crop on the front boat. Leave the front boat in and crop out that little bit of that boat there. And that's the painting I'm looking at. And I like the, the lines going from the dock to the boat. They're nice angled lines that lead you into the painting. Vertical line of the mast here takes you into the background a little bit, but I also want to eliminate These are all white buildings up in here And I want to get rid of a lot of it or really suggest it without adding all the detail. This is how I cleaned up the background. I enlarged the shapes of the trees and Put some distant groups of trees getting them bluer a little more muted blue blue green and these slightly darker Kind of a green green olive green all a uh, green with a little bit of orange not too dark maybe some accents in there kept one or two buildings that might would probably knock this building out right in here just keep this white building maybe the one here and, and probably not these over here i might put one of them in, in the middle here but my focal point would be there and i could even get away with not having any background if i want to zoom in more if the background's too distracting just have that i did leave that boat because it's a little bit of balance on the right side up on top and i would leave it in there also because it's too empty right in here on this right side but that helps simplify things i could move the boats up just slightly and i'm making these changes and moves without really creating anything new i'm just eliminating and moving the shapes that already exist there around a little bit now moving to the next one, early in the morning, so the light is low, it's very dramatic, which is always a good time to paint. So my focal point here, what I'm interested in, is right in here. And so I need to decide what I can eliminate. I do like secondary-wise, as far as what I like. I like some of this light on here, this shape on this dome shape. I like the wall that leads the viewer's eye into the painting, and then this sidewalk 
and steps that lead the viewer's eye up to the uh, monastery on top. So those are all things I want to include, which will pretty much give me a little more of a vertical painting than a horizontal, because everything I like is lined up vertically rather than horizontally. What I know I can get rid of is all of this stuff in here. I don't want to show this whole dome right here, so I'll cut that in half. I'll crop this, and again, I want to zoom in here quite a bit, but not so much that I crowd the domes and the buildings that I want to include. So I'm, I always start out a little further. I can always crop some more later. And this is actually, I don't know if this is a little more square, probably a little more horizontal than vertical, but close to being square. So there's my cropping. And now I want to make some changes here because I have one tower here just right below another. They just sit on top of each other. The building here is too directly below this building down here. So I want to make some changes. I'm going to move the monastery on top over to the left a little bit. And I just did that. Lost my cross up there. I forgot why. And this way it's, it's off um, right above this tower, kind of over to the left a little bit. I still have my um, line here coming down, winding around, and then going up here and lead me up that way. I've changed the shape of that dome. I, I don't have to necessarily. I could use the same shape, just move it over to the left a little bit. I didn't care about copying that shape exactly, so I just moved it over slightly and created a little bit different shape. Just, I also like the vertical of the telephone pole. There's not a lot of verticals here. T towers, um, and that's about it. So the telephone pole, which I don't want to get too thick. I want to keep it thin enough that it's not real obtrusive. It's just it's a nice abstract vertical line to kind of break up a lot of the horizontal lines. This is another one too. Uh, I was interested in the boats, obviously, the boat with the guy working on it, but what I don't want to get too caught up in is just the guy in the boat. I need a setting. I do like that area, the wall kind of leading you in, top and bottom of the wall, the line of the sidewalk leads you in. And I don't need the whole boat. I think we look at something like this and think, you know, I see the figure here with the ladder, I like to paint that. So we move our whole focal point out here and just get the boat in. And there's really no setting. You just have background mountains and a boat with a figure because that's what we're really interested in. And I say that because that was my first intent. I did a color sketch here and that's what I painted too much of. So now, being maybe a little wiser, what I want to do is include the part on the right side and just half the boat. I can always move the ladder and the figure over. That's never a problem. So if I'll start over on the right side and include as much as I want, not too much. But enough of that wall, enough foreground, and I don't want to include the whole boat because that would be too much. Now if I have, um, you know, if this is an odd shape and I want it to be more of a standard shape, 9 by 12, 8 by 10, um, I could just keep cropping a little bit till I get. But I do like the shape of, you know, the background has a nice shape of these trees that are kind of winding this way, and I can have a secondary group of trees gradually getting smaller. Kind of go up that way, a few scattered trees in there. But now I have enough of this. The building, I think, has some interest in it, as well as these strong angle lines pulling you into the focal point. And as far as what caused me to take the picture, the boat and especially the guy fixing the boat, I can always just add that. The ladder here. You don't even have to have to figure on the ground. I might move the figure up on top doing something up there. So don't hesitate to move little objects like that around. They make a big difference, but uh, they're easily moved around. And I would get rid of things. I guess the motorcycle is optional, but it doesn't interest me. Maybe one of these boats, get rid of them. But I like the logs. Again, I can move things like this to balance off a composition a bit better. And I like the vertical telephone poles. I might get rid of this one and just have these two or three. Oh, those are not telephone poles, masks. I guess that's a telephone pole. So play around with it a lot more. And 
if you have Photoshop, it's a good way to do it. But I still do a thumbnail. I still do several thumbnails, kind of cropping and zooming in. This just kind of gets me going first, then I can move on. A couple of more here real quick. Same thing here, I want to uh, crop it. So I look at this, my focal point is the boat right here. And secondarily, maybe that boat, maybe this boat. And I would want to drop this boat down so it doesn't touch the top. So I'd probably pull water in there and I'd get rid of these boats. Maybe have one or two back in here and get rid of most of the buildings, add some tree shapes to create some contrast between the mountain and the trees. So my cropping would be to include this boat first and uh, eliminate a lot of others and probably would not include the whole boat there on the right. Cut off just a little bit of it again when I can lose some it creates more the idea of, of some space outside. Then I want to get rid of a lot of the detail here. Get rid of the boat there and also get rid of a lot of these buildings, which I haven't done yet. But we get rid of most of these. Maybe have one over here on the on this side. Increase maybe the shape and and um, of these green trees. And probably get rid of most of these buildings over in here too, and have one or two in there, and get rid of a lot of these boats. Also down here, I can just eliminate this some of this stuff that I'm not sure what it is, and just increase the coverage of this value and color and add another log or two if I need to. So don't hesitate to really find your focal point, crop it, and then what can you eliminate without trying to make up too much stuff. I know I can reproduce more of the blue water, get rid of most of the boats. The uh, photograph gives me an idea of, of the color of, of the water as it goes back. So just reproducing that to cover up the boats. And I got the value and color of the hills and value and color of the trees. And I can use those to cover up most of the, uh, the houses. Because it just gets too busy. There's too much competing for my focal point, which isn't just the boat necessarily, but maybe it's right here in the boat. Not necessarily a whole boat. I'm going to spend maybe most of my time with all the variation of color on the front of the boat there. And the last one, it's a cloudy day. So you got a real light, cloudy sky with real light white buildings. So it loses a lot of contrast, although I do like it. I like the subtlety, but the composition is good. This one I probably wouldn't crop. Um, my first thought was it doesn't need to be cropped. There's a lot of stuff in it. Again, this is a cloudy day. You can see some dark and light when you uh, look at it, there's a dark area here, light area here, but it's not, it's, it's indirect light. Now, if I want to push more direct light, I can think about a direction of uh, sunlight coming this way. So that everything facing to the right is going to be in shadow. All this will be shadow. And then everything facing the viewer can be sunlit. And then everything facing to the left can also be sunlit. So if I think in those terms, and the buildings all being white, I think make it a lot easier also to uh, go ahead and create a little bit sense of, of sunlight. So I've, what I've done here is just use a blue violet, a muted blue violet, and just a real light muted orange, just to show the big shapes. So knowing that the sunlight again is gonna come in this way, like that. All the buildings facing to the right are going to be in shadow, all these walls. And then the cast shadow from this wall on this building, and the cast shadow here, uh, and then the cast shadow on the sidewalk from this wall comes along in here. So fairly easy to figure out if I keep it in big shapes. I can figure out some sunlight and shadow there. And then the sky, cloudy day, very light. The buildings just blend into the sky. Even if I was painting a cloudy day, I would darken the sky. A muted violet with a little orange or violet and a little yellow. Uh, but here, the clear sky, the darker, the clear sky on a sunny day is darker than a cloudy sky. because The sky is darker. And especially there in the Mediterranean area, it's really dark. I could even go darker than this. But this sets up the big shapes. Everything that's in the sunlight area is going to have some, you know, yellow, yellow, orange in it, even the red pots, because that's the effect of sunlight. And everything in the shadow will have some blue and blue-violet in it. And this creates my shadow pattern. 
that's pretty much what it would look like if the sun was on it. Now every time the value changes on the shadow pattern, uh, or the form changes, like this shadow and this shadow, they're facing different directions, so they can't be the same value. Same thing with this shadow and this shadow. They're different planes, so they can't be the same value. So same thing here. This will be slightly different, so will that, so will that. But it's easy, not easy, but it, if you simplify it, it's a little easier to uh, create a sense of sunlight. In it. And my thumbnail here is more about getting those dark shapes in the right place within the 8x10 square I have there. So I'm not worried about accurate, perfectly accurate uh, outline of the boats, but where to position those shapes within the uh, composition. So you know, how far up, how far over, how much is this boat going to run off, how close to the edge am I here, and then, you know, sh shape of the sky. All of this is designed to make this more the focal point. And um, again, deciding to crop the end of this boat, because uh, I don't want all three or four boats in the picture plane. They look kind of squeezed. Also thinking again about how much water, how much sky, how much mountain, how much tree, and then the positioning of these darker shapes of the boats.